we'll turn to our 11 speakers on the same subject. Francie Maxwell, 4th Council District resident. I was concerned with the statement that Alvarez made in reference to come down every week. Well, if everybody in your community and my community had a livable wage, they'd be down here every week because they could take off from work. People struggle to get down here. I appreciate during our budget times that there's some evening meetings. I appreciate public safety having some um, evening meetings. Those are very well attended. I think that you can look at the history and see that. Our community meetings, if you notice, some communities start at 6, some people start at 6.30. So as we begin to wind up this council and maybe the new people coming on, we can begin to have some dialogue and some discussion. Let some days we change when everybody needs to come downtown and talk. 2 o'clock isn't really good for people that work at Burger King to be able to take off, but they want to tell you that their boss didn't give them a, a, way, give them a raise. We have wages that need to be increased, that need to be monitored, but you need to hear the family stories of what is some of the retaliation that is happening to them at work. They can come and tell you if you would have a 6.30 meeting because they would be able to get off work, go home and pick up their children, feed their children, and then they could catch the trolley down here. Or here's an extra thought. Let's go somewhere in another community a couple times a year. We have plenty of places. We have facilities that would house us all, and you could let your staff sleep in. No one come to work until 11 o'clock in the morning, and that meeting goes until 8 o'clock because you know we're going to need the extra 30 minutes. So just go on and make plans. But I just want us to be forward thinking. You guys are innovative. I want to thank you, elected officials, for running because you make a lot of sacrifices from your personal life and your families. And remember, the reason why you did it was to serve the people. Put the people first, and we're, we're, we're asking you to remember, we work every day. Thank you. Now we'll turn to their 11 speakers. Again, the municipal code allows for 16 minutes maximum on the same subject. Um, each individual will have a minute and a half, except for one individual who's volunteered to have a minute. At the conclusion, I will read the rest of the names into the record of those who are present but are not speaking. We'll begin with Reverend Shane Harris, followed by Armand King, followed by Channing Moreland. And please come forward when your name is called. There are seats in the front for speakers. Reverend Shane Harris. He left, okay. Then we will turn to Armand King, followed by Channing Moreland, followed by Jay Bowser. Hello, thank you. Just based off of what this gentleman just came and said, yes, true indeed, um, blacks do kill blacks, but so do whites kill whites, and Chinese kill Chinese, and Mexicans kill Mexicans, but you never hear those terms, Mexican on Mexican crime. You never hear white on white crime. Why, I want you to think to yourself, why do you hear the term black on black crime? Why is that even a term? And now that question is gonna be posed to my, my supposed to be council member of the fourth district who used that term in a, in a setting with you guys and referring to a meeting that she had with us where I'm part of that group of the young, disrespectful, disruptive people that she referred to. And um, I felt really offended personally and my community and the people that I represent felt offended by her remarks and her, what we judge, what we feel as um, justifying racial profiling, which should never be justified. Just because somebody commits a crime over here doesn't mean that they're justified to pull us over, harass us. And this, you guys might not have grown up like me or, or these other gentlemen and women that are here, but we, I'm 35 years old, and I've had to go through this since I was a kid, racially profiled, pictures taken of me, sat on the curb for no reason, not even committing a crime. I had to live through this through my life. So yes, this is something emotional and touching to me when I hear this come out of somebody that's supposed to be representing me. And, and I represent the people. They're not gonna, they can't come in here like uh, Francine just said. They are working and doing other things and they don't feel comfortable or necessarily know that there's even a setting for them to voice their voice. But I'm here to voice for the many that couldn't show up today or didn't want to come today. That um, this is intolerable. We, even before this moment, we never and Thank have you, not sir. felt the connection Thank to you. Thank you, sir. We, One concluding sentence, please. Oh, and I'm then sorry. the next speaker. Um, the concluding sentence is please resign. Thank you. Channing Moreland, followed by Jay Bowser, followed by Mr. Jackson. All right. Good afternoon. I am young, disruptive, and disrespectful. And I'm coming here to speak about racial profiling and the issues with law enforcement in our community. The issues with law enforcement in our community stem back to 
the slave patrol. They are not new and they are not few, but we're speaking about racial profiling today. Racial profiling is a black man being pulled over for having black features and a hole being blown in his chest with a woman and a child watching. Racial profiling, our council member justified because of black on black crime. Black on black crime is a myth. People kill people, it's about vicinity. 83% of whites kill whites, but no one has ever justified whites being killed by police because white people kill white people. So that is a problem. This is our council member and she cannot represent us. She does not represent us. She represents white supremacy and the system that she works under and we are not about white supremacy. She does not represent our, sp our spirit or our energy and we want her out. Thank you, Jay Bowser, followed by Mr. Jackson, followed by Nadia. Um, yes, what I want to, you know, uh, speak of today is when it comes to um, black on black crime, because that, that really irked a lot of us in the community. Now, when you have something that, that went on in, um, in, I believe it was Charleston, when a white male uh, went into a church and killed uh, nine black individuals, all, white people weren't being pulled over just to be pulled over. When you have all of these uh, uh, domestic terrorist acts that go on by white people, way more than black people. You do not see white people getting pulled over just because they are white. Ask to sit on the curb, ask to go through their car, ask if they're on probation or parole. That doesn't happen to white people, but it happens to black people. And because we have the so-called black on black crime that she said we didn't address in the town hall meeting, but we did. One of the main things that I had said in my, in my second part, I said, the resources need to come to the community so that the grassroots organizations that are working on black on black crime can save thousands of lives. But those resources don't come into our community. She spoke of, I believe it was a CVS or a Walgreens or something getting built, uh, a library getting built in Skyline. But there's a lot of grassroots organizations that need the funding that can save a lot of lives and focus on so-called black on black crime. But what we see it as is just focusing on bettering our community and uplifting our community. So there is no such thing as black on black crime. There's no such thing as white on white crime. It's just a thing called crime and if black lives matter as much as all lives matter and blue lives matter crime in our in our neighborhoods needs to be focused on by bringing the resources down to where they need to be done so we ask that murder cole do this while she is there if not resign if you don't want to do it if you don't want to do this for the people then resign because you're here for us mr jackson followed by nadia followed by abdur rahim hamid uh, <clears throat> yes my name is mr jackson uh i'm a 31 soon to be 32 year old young black male uh, raised, born and raised in District 4, where Murder Cole is our council member. I was disturbed uh, last week when I heard, um, I, I got some, some footage of the meeting here last week, and I was very upset with the fact that she, she was saying that, uh, that racial profiling, it, it, it happens, and it happens because black, black people are killing black people. And that upset me because, to me, racial profiling is, is one of the, the, the reasons or one of the problems that the police are having with black people, period, as far as how we, how we look at them, how they treat us, the, the, the cause and effects. It, it starts right there at racial profiling when, when you just pulling me over because I'm black and now you're going through my pockets, now you're telling me to have a good day, N now you didn't make me, you didn't upset at me. And that's, the, that's part of the, the main issue with blacks. And police, and if we gonna try to fix this thing with black young men and police, we need to not sugarcoat stuff. We need to not have people that's supposed to represent us come up amongst you guys and tell and tell the world because it was over the news that it's okay or, or it's justified that we being racial profile because black people are killing each other, and, and, and it's frustrating because I have three young sons, and if racial profile and keep going on, Thank you, one sir. of them may be hurt. Thank, Thank you, you Nadia, followed by Abdur Rahim Hamid, followed by Robert Robinson. I want to say thank you to those of you who keep eye contact with your speakers and are consistently paying attention to our comments. It's really disrespectful that you turn around and make a joke. I'm not even hearing it. Um, but I do want to say, um, Myrtle Cole, um, you did hear from the community. You asked for community engagement and community uh, communication and you got it and you shut us down you didn't answer a lot of the questions about 90 percent of the questions that were asked at the town hall that the community put together um, and and that was very disrespectful in itself um, secondly 598 lives have been stolen in San Diego by SDPD so you cannot tell me that police brutality does not exist um, you guys need to recognize it and put more preventative don't roll your eyes at me please that's disrespectful we're all adults here and we're not rolling your eyes. Maybe you should be wearing a, a, a shirt that says disruptive. 
Um, but anyhow, police brutality exists, you guys. And if we could please pay attention to it and just take a little bit of time to relate to it, even if it's not your reality, that would make all the difference. Um, we work in your district, Myrtle Cole. We do work on the ground. We have various events to celebrate the beautiful life in Southeast San Diego. And you have received emails from us. And maybe it's your assistance. Uh, I know it is your assistant's job to kind of go through the emails and see where you're supposed to be or not, but maybe you should be more in touch and go knocking on doors with us like some people here knocked on doors to get you in. Um, so I do know for a fact that in order to get you out, we need to vote you out, but I want to tell you that morally and verbally and emotionally, we're here to let you know that we are ready for change, for positive change, um, and we'd like the support of other districts to also come along, please. And David Alvarez, we have great projects going on in Barrio Logan right now. I have dirt under my fingernails from building Thank a park. You, come Thank through, you, it's on National Avenue. Uh, the People's Lot. Abdur Rahim Hamid, followed by Robert Robinson, followed by Kathleen Harmon. Good afternoon, members of the council. My name is Abdul Rahim Hamid. You know, and, and, and I came down here today and I didn't expect uh, a group that was basically calling for the recall of uh, Councilwoman Cole. But I came here to basically say that I support you in what you do. And sometimes we make, we misspeak. I remember George Stevens when uh, Demetrius Du Bois was killed. Uh, he said that the police were justified but they weren't justified in shooting him nine times. A death is a death. But he never apologized for what he said because he believed what he said and he said what he said. We split hairs over that. We disagree without being disagreeable. I believe that the young people, our young brothers and sisters have a, have a platform and they have a place. And I would advise you, I believe in what else. You know, I, I support the, the, the or else because the or else is basically sitting down and giving young people a platform to vote, to, to, be, to have a part of the political capital. I have no dog in this fight. I haven't asked you for a dime. I won't ask you for a dime and I don't need a dime. I've been out here a long time and I'm not here trying to win the popular, popularity contest. So I think that one of the things that we have, I think that it's, your apology has been accepted by, by myself. And I, Jimmy's a great friend and Jimmy's a great leader a reader, should I say. And so, like him or not, uh, he's someone that I stand with and I stand with you, so carry on. Robert Robinson, followed by Kathleen Harmon, followed by Barbara Robinson. Good afternoon, Council, um, Madam President. You know, uh, I'm here today is, you know, I believe in the First Amendment rights. I grew up fighting for the First Amendment right. And see, I applaud these young people for being here today. You know, my hat's off to you because that's how I started. So I'm not in opposition to nothing you say or do. But I will stand with you and work with you, and I know that the council person will stand with you and work with you, but at some point we have to get past it. Um, you know, uh, Myrtle, I don't support talking about letting you go. We have to do work. We will do work. We'll support you with work. And Jimmy, you know I'll support you and I'll work with you and we'll do what we need to do. But I, I, I think it's just fair that when we talk about these kinds of things and talk about black on black crime and police brutality, I think everybody's got a stake in the game. I think everybody's got some ownership here. You know, uh, I feel that way. And, and, and what I might say here might upset somebody and they might want to mince what I say and take it and turn it around. But you know what? I'm a big boy. I can take it. You know, I can handle that. But I do know in order for us to turn around whatever we're trying to turn around, uh, Councilman Cole, we're willing to work with you to turn that around, you know, uh, meet with the young people and do. And I'll be the first one to stand in line to meet. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen Herman, followed by Barbara Robinson, followed by Bishop George D. McKinney. Good afternoon, Council. My heart is really heavy right now. I'm a mother of seven children, and I grew up in Skyline. I walked to help Myrtle, David, just about all of you set where you're setting. And I think the only answer to this problem, the only reason I'm standing here today is 
Myrtle, we have to listen to the young people. And I know that you have agreed to say that you would do that. I'm asking the young people today, let's go meet with Myrtle. Let's give her an opportunity to change. Listen to me, okay? I'm 85 years old. I've been where y'all been. And it's not one of you that I haven't been to rescue you. Not one of you. And that's the way I am. So just like I rescued you, I come to rescue her and our community. It's all about our community. That's where we got to live. And all of you, I agree with what you did. I take my hat off to you. And I say, let's come together. Divided, we can't stand. Let's put everything behind, and it's praying time now. Let's turn this around, and I think we can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Barbara Robinson, followed by Bishop George D. McKinney. I wanted to say I got to talk to so many people, and what I wanted to say to them. Ma'am, would you put, ma'am, ma'am, I'm going to stop your time. Would you, ma'am, up here, up here. Please use the microphone so we can hear you. It's just either one. Well, I'm not a pro. I'm sorry. I wanted, and when I talked to him, uh, I had a very mixed family, so uh, I have a tendency to uh, want to go and everybody to be happy. I, I, my family's very mixed. I want you to vote, doggone it, because I've talked to him, and they say they have, they ha they're not voting, and that's the key to the whole thing. That's the key. You have to vote. Fourth District, 20% vote. Come on, guys. If you want to change, you're going to have to vote. And that's the key to the whole thing. I, all right. I'm, I'm behind you on that, you guys. So I wish you all. Uh, uh, she's helped our kids so much in our neighborhood. And uh, I'm behind her. So thank you. Thank you. Bishop George D. McKinney. Madam President, and to the honorable members of this city council, I'm George D. McKinney, and I'm a 55-year resident of San Diego. I'm approaching my 84th birthday next week. I spent six years as a senior probation officer in this city and 54 years as pastor at St. Stephen's, and I've attempted to be an advocate for justice and peace and uh, brotherhood. First, I want to commend these young men and women who are involved in, in the struggle for justice and for righteousness. I want to commend them for being willing to speak up and to get involved in the effort. And I want you to continue to keep the fight going. It's important that we all engage in this struggle. I also want to mention that it has been my understanding that uh, Councilwoman uh, Myrtle Cole has acknowledged that she misspoke or used some words that may have inflamed or may have been misunderstood and that she has apologized for that. In, in my profession, we call that confession. And when there is a confession that is honest, that is sincere, it calls forth a response of forgiveness and returning to the table to continue in brotherhood and understanding and mutual respect. It is my understanding that that apology has been made and I appeal to the young people to follow through with whatever suggestions are made in terms of continuing the communication and working together to achieve the goals that we all hold very important and very dear to us. I want to say also that we appreciate your leadership in, in, the, in the community and Brother Jimmy Slack doing a great job. And we, support you, we support you for the work that you do. Thank you, sir. And thank you very much. Continue in, to serve us. In addition, there were um, 21 other speaker slips received on the same subject. Let me take a moment to read their names into the record. Brandon Duncan. Ian Maroland, Mer E. B. Ronald Clark, Ray Dewan, Robert Patman, Mika, Rob, Solomon Farouk, Aaron Harvey, 
Anthony, Obadiah Fields, Russell Owens, William Gustin, Brandon Holmes, Minu, Minuhati Kemahata, I apologize, uh, James Bell, Margaret Kuchnia, Trillian Johnson, Michael Odom, and Dedrian X. And that concludes non-agenda public comment.